Hey guys, welcome to another Cinemassacre Plays live stream. I'm Ryan, and I am playing a game that is one of my favorite that, that I've ever played. I mean, this is really exciting for me just because I, I don't often get to play this game because it's a huge time sink, and I'm just really happy that I get to play it. And the reason I'm playing it is because... I just bought the new Star Control Origins Founders Pack. I'm really excited that Stardock bought the IP from Atari, so I figured I would go ahead and start playing this now. I'm playing the Urquan Masters version, and you can actually get this game for free. And, and just to give you an idea of like the preparation that went into what you're about to see, which is me failing miserably, I have... Here's the 3DO copy of the game. This is my 3DO copy of the game from when I was a kid. I have the map of it. Here's the star map of this game. Here's like the actual 3DO star map that I have here. Hey guys, what's up? In addition to that, when you're getting ready to play this game, <laughs> here is my space locations list with all the the things in space here is and you need this which is hilarious this is the quasi space exit point map <laughs> and then i there's so much to do in this game and i figured to make it interesting for you i needed a plan so here's the star control 2 speed run list of tasks that you need to do so i'm ready to go we're gonna jump in I'm playing with the awful Xbox 360 controller. Oh, look, it's the uh, Star Trek movie font. Um, I'm playing with the uh, with this awful controller, so um, my hyper meleeing is not going to be amazing. Hey, what's up, Mike? How's it going? Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Yeah, I guess this technically is in the purview of what I'm trying to do on this channel. Because it was, you know, uh, 2002 it became open source. Which is, which is pretty cool. So, it's funny. This game takes place immediately after the original Star Control. The humans and all their allies have lost the war. And you were out... Uh, can I skip to this? And basically, you were part of a science mission that found this super powerful ship, but you have no idea what's going on. Alright. We are going... Ah! Attention, interloper. I love the, these messages that they do. This drone. The like Star Trek style view screen conversations. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached. So if you remember the Sega Genesis version, they're the green ships that go launch fighters. So you guys have to let me know if you want me to skip through, or if you like hearing the uh, them talk. Most of the voice acting isn't this long. Disobedience will be punished. Yeah. So that's that's them. Um, but before we go to the space station, we're going to go to the moon. The, 
You know what's funny? I think that this scanning screen here is like better than it was in games like Mass Effect. There's basically three types of scans, mineral, energy, biological, but if you do auto scan it does all three. So you can see there's an energy source, there's some minerals, and there's some biological uh, signatures. So we're going to send a lander down. And basically what happened was the, uh, the people who were watching Earth, you saw Earth was surrounded by what they call a slave shield. The people, the people who were watching Earth got sick of watching Earth. So they just build a bunch of robots to make it look like there was a base on the moon. But there's really not. And the commander's going to ask us to get rid of the base on the moon. I had to... F and it's already going to be gone because... Fuck them, right? Um, I didn't really... Yeah, like watch. Here's the base. So they found an alien base. They exposed it. Explored it. It is completely empty, but everything looks alive because they were trying to make it look like they were there. Oh. Now, you don't want to do what I just did and land and take off too much because it does take fuel. And you can see on the right side, we have fuel. I always thought, like... A lot of the worlds that aren't chaotic just feel so peaceful. Like, there are worlds where there's, like, earthquakes the whole time. But you got this, like, nice peaceful music going on. You got, you, you know, all that. Um, but but some of the worlds, like Venus, we would have to upgrade our lander to even land on. Or we get messed up. Okay. Now we're gonna exit here. I'm gonna navigate. Now, let's visit uh, our man at the space station here, Mr. Starbase Commander. I don't even know if he has a name. Attention, unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the. Slave Hayes, Planet. Commander Hayes. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat, are you the resupply vessel? And this is the cool thing. You can say who you are. <laughs> Look, I don't know who you are or why you're here, but right now the only thing I'm worried about is saving the lives of 1900 men and women aboard this starbase and right By the way, that 1900 number is really important because when you're buying new crew, there actually is 1900. Devour, I can see the messages. Cool. We're getting the elements that you require. So where is a good place to get radioactive elements? The answer is Mercury. And you are so damn slow at the beginning. You should see how fast you are at the end. Alright, so we're going to Mercury and we're going. Alright. Yes, Lucas, I have watched the movie Drive. It's not bad. I don't really remember it too much, though. So this is the first planet we land on that's a little hostile. And the reason why we're landing on the planet is because we want to get the radioactives that are right here. We lost a lot of crew there. And if you run out of crew, you lose your planet lander. And that's, that's problematic, as they say. All right. Oh, we're full. The red bar on the right is how much that we can, uh, how much we can store. And there's ways to upgrade that later. But I don't think we're going to be doing a lot of upgrading. Because I don't think, you know, at the speed that we're going to be doing this, we're going to be talking to the uh, Melnorme a lot. But they're really cool. Maybe I'll just go to them once or twice to, uh, to show you. 
Well, I'm playing a 3DO game today, so that's pretty, uh, pretty retro. But yeah, normally I, I do like to play the, the newer games. Not that I don't like the old games. I mean, there's a whole show where we play the old games called, uh, Mike and Ryan. What'd you guys think of DuckTales? I, en I enjoyed playing DuckTales. Alright, so we got the radioactives. By the way, we're already not doing a speedrun. Not that I was claiming we were. If you look at the star map, one of the first places we're going to go is... Let's see, where is it? It is... Yeah. So, that's Alpha Cercini. Yeah. One of the first places we're going to go is right here. Right now, we're down at the bottom here one of the first places we go is we're gonna go is up there and it only opens on on a certain dates of the month and we're gonna miss that so we're gonna end up sitting there for a while so no speed run for us All right, and we're going to do one more thing. Before we go back to him, we're going to go to Pluto. Because there is someone there. Here we go. Boy, I wonder. I wonder if uh, Fred Ford and Paul Reich were were uh, disappointed when they found out that Pluto is not actually purple, with New Horizon. So th those are the highest value minerals in the game, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for this. We have come under fire from an alien vessel on Pluto. They killed Kowalski, Fritz, Chin, O'Donnell, Luigi, and all three of the Lieberman triplets. Oh no. Attention, a big mean hostile alien vessel hovering overhead in an So this is a Spathy. This is Spathy Captain Swiffle. I know you are going to torture me, so let's just get this over with right now. The coordinates of my home world, Spatewa, are 241.6 by 368.7, and the ultra secret Spatewa. Huffy, Muffy, Duffy! Oh, Guffy. Sorry about that little mistake with your landing vehicle. I was uh, so startled when it approached my vessel in a threatening manner that uh, my automated defense systems fired on it when it got too close. I hope nobody got hurt. <laughs> Are you sure? Because your statement is often just a more polite way of saying Attention alien vessel, identify yourself or be destroyed! In any event, I am Spotty Captain Rico of the Void Ship Star Runner. Based here in this planetary system as part of the powerful Earth Tower, the Star Force, which our master, the Earth One, established here to make sure the Earthlings don't do anything tricky. <laughs> Where are the Urquan now? Oh, you you have no idea where they are, sir. Immediately after the subjugation of the last alliance race, the Yehat, I think, the Urquan gathered their dreadnoughts and departed from the edge of the galaxy, commanding us to obey the slave laws or face their wrath when they So, it's funny, you get a lot of the backstory from this guy of what the hell is going on. It's Beetlejuice. So yeah, you could actually piece it all together without 
all this paper, but it would take a long time. We shall fix the were hot of the world, as you know, having been uplifted by the hot just a few decades before the start of the war. Given their habit of detonating those suicidal so-called glory devices in combat, Yeah, the Shofixti were like kamikaze koala bears, basically. So, the trick to this is you talk to him and you threaten him a little bit, but not enough that he actually fights you. Yeah, his pupil is weird. And, and red, too. So what are you doing here on Pluto? I know, and they're all gone, dude. Alright, what about you, Fliffo? <laughs> so, Computer Doc asked, I'm assuming this is the PC version. I have a 3DO, but haven't actually played that version. Is it a good version? So, this 3DO version is the best version of the game that you could play, um, in my opinion. The PC version didn't have any voice acting. This is the voice acting from the 3DO version, actually. Um, the project uh, Urquan Masters basically took all the 3DO stuff and put it in the PC version. Um, so yeah, play it on 3DO or play it on PC. On PC, it's free, exactly the same, and the load times are shorter. That's great. Okay. Originally, we were stationed on Earth's moon, which made us spatty a bit uneasy because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky Earthlings making a surprise attack. But the Inred kept telling us that it was impossible since the Earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the Ilrath left, again we grew fearful, and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on we decided it would be prudent to relocate to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon, Titan, and finally here to Pluto. So they're basically cowards. We decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on a Luna, they would be more likely to try something so So yeah, so basically they rigged up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we know. Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious, unrelenting alien race which we spotted Carl... The, the ultimate evil! evil! Yeah. The Ilrat contingent were supposed to be the toughest, the most rigid flippable... Yeah, they were the backbone, yeah. Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace, ancient I think, they said something to the effect of... Real soon. <laughs> How many crew do you have on board? I to say scores, and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride through the corridors of this specially modified, super-efficient, mass destruction orient. I am undone. And now I So he's by himself on the ship, basically. How true! In truth, just between us, during the past 
I yet know I find myself in the, and in the presence of your huge, powerful, death-dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use in order to threaten... They're teddy bears. Cool. So he's happy to join us. Boom. All right, we're gonna save because <laughs> this game is uh, is awful, and you do you do one thing wrong, and you're you're fucked basically. So. <sighs> Here you go. So Andy asked, why don't I stream on the main channel? I don't stream on the main channel because we're trying to build up the plays channel as a more modern and gameplay oriented channel. And I figured this would be a good place to go to, uh, you, you know, kind, kind of build a, a uh, you, you, you know, a, a different kind of audience or, or build a wider audience for modern games basically did you find any radioactive elements yeah l2 nuku i did play the original from 1992 i played it on 3do when i was a kid we're initiating transfer of radioactives captain now as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores there that's much better power ratings are climbing life support is coming back into the green deep radar systems and sensors are now online and i can scan your vessel what the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. The mission was highly hmm. secret. You know, come to think, Commander. Captain, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Andresynth Space. The Vela Star System. Yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? It's Why huge, you like... What do you want, our, Whatever, I'm not going there. <laughs> ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, a long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall... <laughs> Luke Leopard, do you want us to play Portal 2 or Postal 2? Two? two very different games. ...down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive. But I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that... Postal 2? Okay. Somehow crack the Earth's slave shield. Well, um, how did that come out yet? They, uh, James and Mike recently played a pretty, uh graphic it's game but i can't talk bad. about it cuz the video is not out yet punish us here on the station they'll exactly n64 actually you'll see soon well. before i commit this station to helping you attack the urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated i have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes believe me we do boss i'll make you a deal if you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least I will seriously consider your offer. We found the base. Oh, it was abandoned. All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Long range sensors show a ship closing on this. I love when long range sensors show a ship approaching. Avenger class. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. By the fetid breath of the dark twin Kazan of humanity. So they worship the dark gods Dogar and Kazan. When I 
intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth. Uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the, the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armed starship. And therefore, in direct violation of the oath of fealty, I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery when I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. Yeah, where the hell did you come from? No. I have no fear of you, feeble mammal. Though my ship lacks a functioning cloaking device, and many of our crew are dead, my gods, Dogar the Black and Kazan the Unseen, have personally confided to me that they despise you humans, humans. And that they will help us to kill you all. Alright, so the question is, do we go with the human cruiser or the Spathia looter? Well, th we're going to go with the human cruiser. That was easy. What a beautiful sight, Captain. I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? Then, Commander, we will proceed to kick some major alien butt. Just that. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? Yeah. Okay, that sounds pretty inspiring. So be it. The new alliance of free stars. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the star base to take at least... All right. I have good news to report, Captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got all the minerals we have to offload here. Not a bad job, Captain. Be careful out there, Captain. So you can talk to him and get all kinds of information about the world. So we're gonna get a ton of fuel. And I want at least two of these and more of these. And then we're gonna get another fuel tank and we're gonna fill it as much as we can. There you go. So we used all our money doing that, but we need that. All right. So now it's like, where are we going? All right. We are going to go to, oh wow. Alpha Pavona seven already. Yeah. This is not going to be a fun, uh, this is not going to be a fun voyage. We're probably going to die. Actually, let me save. I don't think we can go all the way there. Let, let me find a world that has a ton of metals that's close to here. So we can load up. Because we're going to need a lot of resources to... to do what we want to do. You know what? Let's just go to the... I really want that, though. The... The... The thing. 
the closest rainbow world to there. You know what? We're going to go for it. But I'm going to save first if we don't make it. Let's see, where do we want to go? I guess we could get the Pekunk thing first. We'll go like here. We'll get the the Pekunk uh, to be on our side. I was checking lists of planets, uh, Queso Kaka. Music's so good in this game. So that's Alpha Centauri, you can see we're passing on the right. Actually, we could go there and visit the Milner May. So there's, I forget where, they're like somewhere in here. Every red giant they exist at. Crap, crap, crap. Oh. Yeah, see how the turning jets help so much? Yeah. Oh, there's good minerals on this planet, actually. But the tectonics, it says class 6. So they're pro it's probably very... Uh, there's probably a lot of earthquakes. So I got my hand on the X button. Yeah, that's not the kind of planet you want to go to. You, We would die instantly if we went there. It'd be funny if, like, once we could detect all the planets in Alpha Centauri, if it was exactly laid out like this. Oh. Yeah, we don't want to land on this planet either. See, the weather is class 7. Are there any nice planets in this system? So, somebody asked if we're partnered with Nintendo. We're totally not, and that's why we really can't do much to cover their games or anything like that. We love Nintendo games. It's just, uh, I don't know. We don't have a partnership. The first Nintendo event I ever got to go to was the 1-2 Switch. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, get out of this, or do I have to? Wasting fuel. Yeah. It's going good, Zachary. Trying to find something of value on, on this uh, in this star system that isn't covered with fire and earthquakes and everything in between. Oh, so this is a ruby world. This is a very... This is one of the richest worlds in the game that's not a ra rainbow world. There's ruby, emerald, and I forget. There's some other kind. So if I can actually land here and not burn to death, I have to try to get it, guys. I'm going to lose crew here. We did it. <laughs> Do I get greedy and try again? I guess. One more time.
Yeah. Okay. We're, we're getting out of here now. But if you look at our manifest, see, we have a hundred of the best minerals. That's 2,500 uh, uh, resources, which is perfect. But we can't, we only have 13 crew left. We can't keep doing that. Because we're going to end up burning the resources to get more crew, you know? So it's like... Difficult situation. Luke, I think this game came out in 1992-ish. I might be wrong. Let me see what it says on the box. This one said 1994, but this is the 3DO version. There are parts that are action-packed, and there are parts that aren't. No. I remember there being, like, pretty good planets around where the ores are. So Nick asked if I could play Kerbal Space Program. I will play Kerbal Space Program. Oh, there's a mil There he is. We gotta talk to him. I think he's orbiting the green planet right now. There he is. What's up, dude? I am Tree Master Greenish, in command of the Melnome Starship, inevitably successful in all circumstances. I bid you a formal welcome, Captain. Though we Melnome have just recently arrived in this region of. I love how bubbly they are. They like bubble. To make contact with your species and look forward to an extended, profitable relationship. So these guys are like creepy Ferengi. Even before our first meeting, we knew of you, Captain. Though your struggle to free Earth shall be a long and difficult challenge, fraught with great danger and mystery, we have great. <laughs> I like Overglock said, Trade Master Greenish is my rap name. That's funny. We gather information from a thousand He reminds me of Varys from Game of Thrones. And time. Our charge for revealing even one of these sources would be so high that your species would be in debt to us for centuries. <sighs> Absolutely. Our primary trade good is information. Why, right here on my display screen, I have something which, I'm certain, would be of incalculable value to you. We can discuss the details of this very significant information later, when we have established normal trading procedures, at which time we shall also discuss the nature of our fees. So they care about biological data, they care about rainbow world locations, they care about components. You are of course correct. We long ago abandoned currency, and now only deal with commodities that have an intrinsic value, such as valuable information. No, it's <laughs> not. In fact, in our culture, giving, with no fair exchange of goods or services, is considered vulgar and inappropriate. Please do not mention this subject again. I don't like that his face goes over his arms, or are they even arms? Our origins and purposes are frankly mysterious, and due to several unavoidable factors, we are unable to discuss ourselves in any great detail. Hey, Exalted Duck, I wouldn't call Star Control 3 a game ahead. It's definitely a game behind. We're not going to talk about Star Control 3. Yes, let us get down to business. Since this 
is your first time trading with us. Let me explain how our system Why does your bridge turn pink, dude? We are interested in purchasing certain items, specifically biological data on alien life forms and the coordinates of certain strange worlds whose radiant energies defy all scanners, producing a rainbow-like image. In exchange, we have many interesting and valuable tools compatible with your starship's technological specifications and many in to facilitate trade with which you, if you have any, now. Yep. So there's nothing you can do with him until you have something that he values. So. So yeah. That's him. So I'm gonna go try to make friends with the Pakunk. So Mito Crimson Fate asks, do I play video games for a living or have a normal job, work at Arby's or something? Um, so my normal job is I'm the president of Screenwave Media. It's a YouTube multi-channel network with 650 channels that does close to half a billion views a month. So that's my job. Um, I'm also working on developing a few video games um, that I'll talk about from time to time. I have always been big into working with Cinemassacre. I've worked with them for over 10 years. So um, that's why I do this. Because it's fun. I like helping out Mike and James. And um, I like playing games. So that's why I do this. I do have the map. Somebody was at Gabriel X was asking about the map. Here's the map. We're gonna go talk to the Pakunk now. Here they are. I hope they're nice. Yeah. Welcome to our home stars. We are the Pakunk. The Pakunk, we are. Seekers of the deepest truths, askers of interesting and significant questions. Even now, a question of great transcendental significance comes up into our mind. Who are you and what do you want? We are friendly beings! Although we Pekunk have no rank, no pecking order, no arbitrary scheme of dominance, we do recognize that some of the souls in this universe have lived many lives, while others are but spiritual chickadees. I, Captain, have lived 38 lives, a paltry number compared to those wise and ancient souls who guide our race. You must consult them, Captain. They will help you to understand yourself, and in doing so, understand others, who in turn may or may not understand other things. Seek those wise birds that are... Gamma Kruger 1. Gamma yep. Kruger 1. They have all the answer. Yes, by all means. If that's when the stars... Yes, my inner... I forgot that you had to go to their homeworld, that you couldn't just, uh... Where is Gamma Kruger? Epsilon Kruger? Alpha Kruger? Oh well, but that's also in... Uh, Gamma Kruger 1 is also in Illrath space. But they're easy enough to fight. So Luke, everybody wants me to play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, so I probably will. The reason why I played this was because I just became a um, founder level backer of the new Stardock Star Control. So, um... Hey Shane, what's up? Shane from Reraz is in the chat. Yeah. 
Hey Chris, there's more than one good game on the 3DL, but this is the important one. So we're trying to go to that star that's straight ahead. We're gonna end up running into Pakunk again. Hopefully not Illrath. No, 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 go, 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 oh. So these are Illrath, so they're not even worth talking to. I guess we're doing this. Oops. <laughs> Alright, I guess we're gonna run like little girls. Warp, 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 There you go. Not Illrath, not Illrath, not Illrath. I think I'm faster than them. Maybe not. So we lost. <laughs> Gotta load from the save. <laughs> So, maybe I'll fly, hmm, you know what, if I go back to Earth and get, no, you know what, we're, we're doing this, we're doing it live, we're going to fly to like right here, it's not a Kickstarter, uh, oh, nice Shane, did I just run into him? I guess I did. Yeah, the 3DL was infinitely better than the CDI. I saw that they were talking about that in the chat. So, so Shane, I didn't back a Kickstarter. Um, Stardock bought the license for Star Control from Sega. And they're coming out with a new game called Star Control Origins. Which will be a prequel to this game. Um... But it takes place in an alternate universe because of rights and ownership and such. Um, but but yeah, any, anyway, I am going to... So I backed it, and I was looking at all the materials you got for buying their Founders Package, and I thought, oh, I really want to play this game now. Do you ever play Street Fighter on 3DO, Chris? It's one of the best versions of Street Fighter Turbo. Don't be Illrath. Don't be Illrath. Don't be Illrath. Good. So when you run into other ships, basically it drops you out of hyperspace. It's just the nature of it. Here we go. They have weird hands, that's the weirdest part. So I think we're skirting Ilrath, uh, Sphere of Influence, oh there they are. I mean, I could probably kill him if I, like, tried hard enough. Oh. 
All right, we're going. We're gonna try doing something different because we're just gonna die doing it this way. All right, and the Xbox controller is kind of shit for the battle anyway. Not that I'm making excuses. I could have played better. So I'm gonna go back to Earth. I'm gonna. I mean, you know, you know what would rock their. If I visit the ores, and get some ores nemesises or nemesi, I don't know. We we would crush them. So we're gonna go. Where is it? If I if I could get like the Talo shield or something, or the sorry, yeah, they they give it to you. I can go meet with them. That is Volpeculi is the, the cluster that they're in. I wish this was in order of system, this list here. I'm looking for Ors Homeworld here. Okay. It's Edda Volpeculi. Go there. So I think I'm going to make peace with the ores, and then, um, I guess that'll be the stream. Go back to the base outfit. Yeah, this is one of those games where you really have to study things. And I do, I do need more uh, thrusters, Chris. I agree completely. Because the Illrath Avenger is not really that fast of a ship. Like, later on, we'll go back there and basically harvest them. So is that a Slylandro probe, or is that... Did we make it where we were going? Yeah. We come in peace. Pending alien contact priority override. Must break target into component. That's a problem. I only have to hit him once. Alright, maybe that's not the plan. Maybe the plan is go back to Earth, spend the money we have. <laughs> At this point, maybe we sell our existing ships for more thrusters and stuff. That might be a better plan. Yeah, probably. That's the plan right now. I like that somebody in the chat said, Captain Canada said, OG Mass Effect. 
Absolutely, that's exactly what this game is. So we're gonna build up a little bit. I was trying to rush it. That's the thing. This isn't a game you rush. We'll stop at Mars. We'll get the resources there as well. Because that's a planet with no uh, hostile anything. The 3DO manu uh, manual has some good stuff in it too. It has like the top 10 richest worlds, the top 10 most life-filled worlds. Here's some minerals. Good deal. Starbase Captain, can you tell me about the Reapers? That's funny. So see how easy it is to collect minerals on this planet versus what we were dealing with before? Nick said it looks a ton better than No Man's Sky. I agree with that. And there's actually planets you go to. They're different. There's variety. And it's a flat 2D plane and the planets are different. So I'm going to an Andromeda event on Friday. I'm going to get to record footage from it. So I'm excited about sharing that with all you guys when I get back. So for the rest of the week, I'm going to be at uh, GDC. So, I'm going to try to bring, like, my mic and stuff with me, and maybe we can record some stuff, but I, you know, I'm going to be at GDC for most of the week, so, that's a thing. Do I think we'll see another update for No Man's Sky? Given the fact that, like, the base building update came out and nobody really cared or played it, um... I don't know. I guess it depends when Sony cuts them off, right? Here you go. Excellent work, Captain. Blow up an Urquan for me, Captain. Will do. Well, first things first. We're doing that. And we're doing this. We're actually, let's just upgrade our ship. We're gonna sell everything. Let's max out the fuel first. We have full fuel. <sighs> That's what you want. <laughs> now we can go places faster. We could probably fight too if we had to. I love how everybody's like, oh, it's the precursor to FTL, it's the precursor to this, it's the precursor to that. Alright, we're going there. And then we're gonna fly up to the other one. I'm gonna save again just because I'm nervous. There you go. We should be way faster now. We're almost max speed now.
Here we go. Oh, is there a Star Control post mortem at this GDC? Because I would like I would like to see that. Um, I have the audio pass, so I should be able to hear the audio. Uh, Fred Ford and Paul Reich are some of my game design heroes. Because in addition to this, which is one of my favorite games, they also made um, Skylanders, which is good. All right, well, we made it here, no problem. Let's see if we can collect some minerals before we uh, before we leave. But there's going to be a shit ton of pakunk everywhere. But I think if we're nice to them, they won't hurt us. Gamma Kruger one. Yeah. <laughs> Not much in the way of mineral. Oh, there's biologicals though. Is this planet just gonna be awful to land on? Let's see. No, it's it's survivable. How many hits do these guys take though? Getting the biological data. It's merely treacherous, not ultra deadly. <laughs> It'll be good to have this bio data when we're going to see the uh, when we're when we're going out in the space, so we can get fuel from the from the Milner May if we have to. Because they will give us fuel in exchange for it. There you go. Oh, crap. Gonna kill him. <sighs> there are planets where the wildlife is so aggressive, it, they'll like chase your lander down. There you go. By the way, the lander can't go backwards, if you were wondering. So if you get in a shitty situation, you just kind of have to roll with it. One more tree left. Is it a tree? I'm calling it a tree. We did it. Okay. Do not be 
All right, we got the bio data. We got some some minerals, but not enough. We need to get way more minerals before we go back. Hopefully this planet won't be as treacherous as the last one. Weather none, tectonics one. We should be able to just land and not have to deal with anything. But it's really crappily mineraled out, unfortunately. At least they're not the lowest level minerals. Stop hiding 100. This game's Star Control 2, and uh, you should give it a try. Give it a chance, too. The Pekunk are awesome. Don't talk about the Pekunk, Milan. I love them. They're, they're actually one of the best ships to, to, uh, to defeat the last, the last guy, to defeat the Sumatra. Last guy is maybe the wrong term. The the, fi the final ship? The final conflict? I, I don't know. Gas giant. You can't do anything with gas giants. I hope in the new game they let you do stuff with gas giants. You know, I've never played Starflight. Those of you who've, who have played Starflight, do you really recommend it for me? It looks like they're all just gas giants from here on out. First, we'll save. Then we're going to try it. We're going to try to run the gauntlet, guys. That was easier than I thought it would be. We're lucky they give us so many slots. So I think this is their home world, I think. Or at least this is where you talk to them. Let's loot and pillage their moon first. Pretty decent moon. It's got radioactives on it. Hopefully it's not a tragedy to land on. Pretty good. The lightning's the easiest to dodge. So that doesn't really bother me. It was funny, I played this game before we learned the periodic table in school. So it was fun seeing all the elements, even like the fake ones. Because it, it made me read about all that stuff, because I'm a nerd, I guess. Yeah, Star Control 1 was like an unlicensed looking cartridge. I don't know if it was actually unlicensed, but it was like a weird looking cartridge on uh, Genesis. If you get bored of Star Control 1, still give Star Control 2 a chance. They greatly improve the, com the combat. You. 
So check this out. When we go to this planet, basically, this is their home world. So it's gonna have infinite, uh, infinite ones. So you have to be nice. Hey Shane, got my manual right here. Nothing yet. the ships what the hell So that's what you want. That's why you go there. <laughs> Shane's like, I don't trust to blow him up with lasers. I don't know. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. Well, actually, yeah. Oops. Get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here. Oh, we have to get out with the flagship to actually get out? That sucks. Or I could just, you know, do this. Now that I'm faster than them. I am faster. Let's see. I have no dynamos though to recharge. Fuck 
Fuck you. How many of them were there? I don't remember. This is the good version of Asteroids. Good. I'm getting out of here. Go, 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 So am I just fucked? Should I just restore from the save? There's only one of them. They stand a chance against it. Fighting against a cloaked ship is not fun. See, when they decloak, they always decloak facing you, though, which is a problem when you're trying to do what we're trying to do. I wish I had the upgraded gun, I'd like, wreck him. Oh well. Well, that's the stream for today, guys. I will fly back to Earth after I load. Um, so, my plan is I'm going to play this game every other day, so that we still get to see a new game. And the new game I want to play, I'm going to tell you what it is, because I... I just saw it last night. So tomorrow, I'm going to be playing Hollow Knight, which looks pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that. I will see you guys next time on the next uh, Cinemasker Plays live stream. See you later.